As someone who has taken photography seriously for a good few of years now, I've developed some confessions that I would like to share today. And what better place than sitting on a towel in the sand by the ocean? YouTube has given me a better place to share my work than any other social media platform. I have done Instagram for many years and I have seen very little growth after trying different strategies and trying reels and posting every day and just being mentally exhausted from all of it. YouTube has just been a much rewarding experience. Even though I'm a photographer and videography is kind of more like something I dabble in, being able to share my photography and my videos has reached more people than my Instagram ever has. If you're struggling with Instagram um, and don't mind making long form videos, then I highly recommend starting a YouTube channel. Um, I have found it very rewarding and it's the platform that I take the most seriously. And I've also gained more community from it. Shout out to Ryan and Christian who are always, you know, commenting and messaging me when they see that I'm doing more film and they're super excited. And it's just really fun to talk to people instead of having someone drop like a flame emoji or something. There's there's more conversation going on on YouTube, which I really, really love and appreciate so much. I have to admit, I don't feel burnout like a lot of other artists feel burnout. I don't know if it's something that I will feel eventually, but right now I can't say that I have felt a non-desire to create just from mental fatigue. I feel mental fatigue and there are some days where I'm too tired to create, but it's not that I don't want to. I always want to, whether it's photography or making a YouTube video or sewing or even just, I love fashion. And so that's also like a big creative part of my life is styling and, and sketching out things that I could maybe one day sew. But I'm always doing something creative because it truly is what makes me wake up. I know one day I'll probably feel that burnout that a lot of creatives find with that creative block. But as of right now, I I have not found myself in that situation. So my next confession is that I hate to feel stagnant and I call it being trapped in a box. Um, it is what irritates me the most in life. And whenever I feel that I've become stagnant or that my creativity is kind of in a slump of sameness, then that is when I need to push myself the most to get out of that comfort zone and learn, experiment, and grow because otherwise I'm just going to stay in the exact same place and eventually I'm going to find that unhappiness. And my work, client work, that's a little bit different, but I love being able to share ideas and bounce ideas off of people. And I try not to put so many restrictions on my work. I try not to think of having a cohesive color palette as much anymore. I think that color palettes are very dependent on what you're working on and the feel that you're trying to convey. And I don't think confining yourself to one and being restrictive is the best course of action. Your style will show through in other things like your composition and the lenses that you're using and any filters that you might have um, that I think the color palette is like just the surface level and a very shallow way of thinking about art style as a whole. I don't think it's wrong to have color preferences. I have color preferences. I know that I prefer cooler greens over more yellow toned greens and that's okay. But there are some times where I find myself thinking like, ooh, you know, a warmer tone green would suit this more than my favorite color of green. And that's okay. I just want to focus more on the feeling of my work and the story that I'm telling more of is this what fits into my creative world. And this is also just a reminder that art rules are there to be broken. 
you're supposed to learn them so that way you can have like a good baseline, a jumping off point, but art evolves when they're broken. That's how innovation exists. So if someone says like, oh, you know, you're not supposed to do that, but you think it looks really good, then go ahead and do it. My last confession for you is about big, bad imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is something that I have struggled with for many years, and it's come in different forms and different waves. I used to not feel very confident in the prices for my services and my work, and that's taken many years to build confidence in, and I'm at a point where I feel more confident in my prices for my services and, and my art prints. But lately, that imposter syndrome has shown itself again. And I feel like I never do enough. I feel like I never do enough personal work when I'm doing client work. And when I'm doing a lot of client work, I feel like I'm not doing enough personal work. And it leaves me feeling very down about myself. And I start that comparison with other artists who are just always doing client work. And to me, it may look like that they're also doing a lot of personal work, but I don't, I don't really know because social media is such a pinpoint in someone's real life that it's easy to compare yourself because that's all that you get to see. And I logically know that that's not everything, but when you just constantly see it, it's really hard to ground yourself in reality because you don't see that part of reality. And seeing is a whole lot better than just constantly telling yourself. But so when it comes to YouTube, I never feel like I'm doing enough photo shoot videos. And whenever I have to put out a more low key video because I have a big photo shoot planned and it's taking up a lot of time and resources that sometimes I have to throw in an easier video. Um, because I, I really want to maintain consistency. And if I broke that consistency, I would feel awful. So it's a, like, it's a give and take battle. And I have so many people who tell me like, no, I loved your, your video. It was really nice to just kick back and watch something a little more calm. Not everything has to be go, go, go. That was really nice to hear because I'm by myself with this. I just make everything by myself. I don't really pitch ideas off of people unless it's something I'm really unsure about, but I've been at this long enough to, I'm getting an idea of what does, of what people want to see. And I still want to have room for my own ideas and my own creativity and innovation and experimentation and all of that. But it's really hard to not compare yourself when there's lots of numbers and, you know, you have dreams and, and all that stuff. Very vulnerable. I didn't mean to get that vulnerable. That's not at all what I wrote down in my notes, but that's that's my imposter syndrome. And it's something that I'm battling with every day. And it's something that I'm gaining confidence and combating. I have no idea what my frame looks like. So forgive me, the lighting is making it very difficult to see my my little screen on the side there. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you liked our change in scenery. I have a couple videos that I'm filming here while I'm visiting Florida on vacation. So it's a little bit of work, a little bit of play, but I hope that you enjoyed. And I hope that maybe you resonated with something that I said, or maybe you have your own confessions that you would like to share. I would love to hear them. Um, I'm sure my hair looks crazy. So sorry about that. I'm covered in sand and it's a little windy and I hope that the ocean wasn't too loud, but that's all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a super lovely day. If you would like to see more of my face, you can subscribe, leave a like, you like, all the good YouTube jazz, and I will see you next time. Bye!